Okay, hello, Dennis. Welcome. So it's been a little while. I think it's been about a month and a half since I showed off some stuff. So uh, was slow for a little while, but then a uh, bunch of stuff came in that. So got a lot of stuff to show off. So what to start first? Well, I guess the first thing I should show off is uh, system-wise. I have a 2DS now. Uh, well, a well, you know, the 3DS, 2DS thing. Um, the problem with this, and let's see, I'm not sure if you can see it too well. Yeah, right there. You can see a reflection there too. That, but you can see those scratches there. So this was uh, twenty-seven dollars. Not too bad. The scratches ain't really that big of an influence, but um, this allows me to have. A DS I can take on trips, not really worrying about my main units being missing by any means. Though I've never lost any of my handhelds before. That doesn't ever mean it ain't possible. So, but uh, $27 for a 2DS, that's not too bad in my opinion. I mean, I think the general price they go for is about, what, about 50 bucks, probably bare minimum. Or bare dry bones minimum, I'd say. As for some other random finds here, got a good copy of More Combat Armageddon for the PS2. Clean disc. Then yeah, let's see, that goes with some some one minute one stuff. Splasher, don't know anything about. Let's see. Another limited one title now. This, I remember Dan saw the cover for this, and he's like, ooh, boobies. <laughs> so, um, this is, this looks like, when I look at the back, it looks like a kind of a Metroidvania type game. It says there were three characters you can play as on the back, so that one might be interesting to check out. I do know that was on the Vita also, because limited one games off of the physical full PS4 in Vita on that. Let's see... I will still on some limited one stuff. Let's see. That was another limited one. Didn't really get a lot of this organized. I wanted to get the two main things, Jimmy stuff and Pink Gorilla stuff organized. Let's see. Iron Iron Cryptical. I play I actually opened this played this a little bit. It's kind of a weird kind of gauntletish roguelite type game it's up to four players uh, I might try to shale play it with Dan one day of that I tried a little bit it's definitely uh, not something for easy want easy one through a game let's see then I think that's is there some others are they over here everything's everywhere ah, no stickers everything is unorganized it's a mess let's see Yes, this one, this one, those were both limited ones. So, here's something from, if you ever seen the person who played, uh, not played, but made uh, the Call of Cthulhu game, um, what is it, Cthulhu Saves the World or something, or Breath of Death 7, um, this is of his fame, Cosmic Heroin. Uh, this is a post, I believe it was described as a sci-fi corner trigger style game. And this is really heavy. Like, there was some, like, be honest with screw it. I'm opening it. <laughs> it is very heavy. The guy, the guy rubbed that knife in for one of my co-workers, though. Yeah, I know, he's, he's always complaining I'm fiddling it around, so gotta, gotta do that. It's, it's my new good luck system. So, I want to see what this thing looks like, because it, this is the heaviest, just, standard PS4 case I think I've ever held, so, this thing better be big. And holy crap it is, it's pretty thick, actually. How many pages is it? 71 pages, and it's in full color. Wow, this is actually a pretty nice book. It's not, and I mean, it's like, it's paperback, but I mean, it's not like the cheap kind of staple that's binded in that. So, pretty nice. It barely, like, fits in the case. So, I haven't played this yet. Obviously, I just opened it, but, <laughs> um, 
Like I said, I was dis if I Nemble, it was described like a Chrono Trigger game. So if you're interested in that, you might want to take a look at that. Um, I know this is another mobile RPG that's from uh, this company down here in the corner there. They've been getting a lot of their mobile RPGs ported. Let's see. Yeah, the uh, Summer Night was also pretty big, but if I remember correctly, the Summer Night one was in a normal where it has staples on the side. It's not bound in the central part, I don't think. I'd have to double check. But uh, it doesn't look too different. It looks a little better than the, the other one that Limited Ones did. Um, I, I can't remember what the name of it was off the top of my head. I, I did a live stream, a little like one hour try of it. It looks a little bit graphically, but it's probably not too much different in that regard. And I think that's all the limited one stuff, though. So, oh boy. Maybe I should have ordered this stuff, though. So, another thing I got, I finally got the way into Historia 3DS. Um, where'd they go by? The um, Perfect Chronicle. I haven't played it yet. Um, this was actually on sale at Walmart. I think it was like 20 bucks and what was it? Normally $39, I think. So that wasn't too bad. And it got the art book and the, the um, stickers. The art book was one of the reasons I was curious to gain the launch version. But I just... I don't want to get in a rant about but I don't like the new profile images they made. Specifically of Heist, like, I really, really don't like Heist's look. Everyone else is manageable. Heist just looks awful to me. And I'm going to get in the way up there. We've always been there several times. And I, I do have the game out of there, but it's sealed, so I have not tried that yet. Let's see. Then we got the Play Asia. Now this... This is a very strange story with this thing here. So, I know Dan's aware of this. I, I had a long-ass rant about this thing to Dan a long time ago. So, on Epic, now, um, if you're a long-time viewer, you may actually remember I actually uh, streamed the PC version of Unepic a long time ago when I first tried Twitch out, like a really long time ago. Like, very, very long time ago. So... Play Asia, like near the end, I think it was Novemberish of last year, did as one of their collector's editions were doing an epic. Now this was like their third, fourth exclusive physical limited edition, and they were trying out a VIP system. Basically, if you had ordered all the past ones, you got an email that gave you like a two days early access to pre-order it. So I did that because I really liked it, this game. I, I did, I think, about four of the bosses and it just got to a point where it was kind of holding up other stuff I was playing. So let's see. Yeah, it was stapled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought it was like. But, um, so I was really excited to get this. Like, super, super excited. So, I pre-ordered it, and it came with two others that I got a long time ago. I got those in the mail. Um, I can't remember what they were called. They were two titles I was unfamiliar with. But those two, and it was at, what is it, Rainbow Skies. It's a tactics RPG, and I remember that one, because it's... It's what I think caused all the problems that I had with this. So, I waited, waited. So, around September this year, because normally Play Asia waits for everything in your order to be released, and then they mail your package. In very rare scenarios, they may separate something to send this earlier than something else. I'm not sure what really causes that to happen. I've had all those do that before, but very rarely. So, I finally get my package, and this was removed from my order, because they didn't have any more. But I was one of the VIP people who got to pre-order this before tons of other people did. So, that was one of the things I was confused about. So, what held up my order, because most people were getting these, um, they were getting them around, I don't know, maybe like the fifth month of the year or something. 
But mine didn't get sent out because the Rainbow Skies kept getting delayed over and over and over again. And obviously that was really frustrating me because this was like, this is my favorite PlayAsia game uh, exclusive they've done so far. So, because I really like this. this is, if you love Metroidvania and D&D stuff, you should totally check this game out. But, so, I actually got into contact with one of the PlayAsia people. Foresight contacted their, um, their normal help station there. And they basically just told me I'm out of luck. I'm fucked. They gave me a refund that. Now, there was a guy on the Discord who's in charge of this stuff. And I, I asked him about it. So, he, I give him big thanks for this i want to take it i want to take a screenshot of this and send this to him and be like thank you so much because it was thanks to him that i got this now this is probably an actually werewolf version of the game because it's a sample copy it does work though i played it i played it but this is a sample copy so in a strange turn of luck you could argue i got a werewolf version of the game but I would gladly have gotten rid of all that knowing stress about it just to get the game normally, man. It was not worth that. But you could argue it. You could argue it's probably way more than the other ones. But anyway, I did get thanks to him. Thank you so much if for somehow you're watching this or you see the picture that I choose for this, that. But I owe you so much. Thank you. You're great. I really hope you get a lot of positive wet for it. Because, um,. Apparently, other people with other games have been in that situation, so he's been really cool about that. So, I'm really glad to get that. That is definitely on my consideration to do as a playthrough uh, next year or something when I get a few other things done, because I know that's a very time consuming game. So, anyway, moving on. Uh, this is kind of a generic game The Devious Dungeon. It looks like something to be obviously from like a mobile game, be honest. It's really a time killer. Honestly, this is more beneficial on the Vita. But usually if there's a PS4 or Vita version, because I play my Vita games. Excuse me. I generally play my Vita games on my Vita TV. I don't really use my handheld too much. So I generally go for the PS4 versions if there's a choice between the two. But if that's the kind of situation where you actually do use your Vita's handheld, um, that's probably better for mobile. It's a hack and slash kind of fail. Very, very simple hack and slash. Not even remotely complicated. And I have one more Play Asia. Let's see, where, oh, there it is. I haven't opened this one up. I'm not really sure what kind of game this is. It's called Leap of Fate. I haven't opened it yet. Um, it looks, it's a top-down type game, so I'm assuming it's something like Gauntlet, so. I like Gauntlet style games, so that's probably something I would like to check out, but I haven't tried that yet. There's something that's right up Dan's alley. This is probably the most exciting thing he's looking forward to. SNK Heroes on the PS4. Now, this is the, um, I'm not sure if this is the Asian version. Either way, it has English subtitles and stuff on it, so it has English in it. I think this was the Asian version, but interestingly, it came with a soundtrack disc, which oddly has the artwork facing outward for some reason, but um, I can see in the corner track 16, so this isn't like one of those kind of crappy sample discs Atlas was doing around the original DS. I didn't like those. Uh, so this is a pretty significant uh, soundtrack, to be honest. But um, I play. I actually own the um, the Neo Geo Pocket um, hero and fighting game, and uh, the newest killer they announced is a hilarious throwback to that too. But I look forward to trying that out. Maybe you can do a limited ones try out stream sometime. I've actually thought about that before, Dennis. I've actually thought about trying that before. Because um, I got a lot of limited ones or just... I, there's so many of these limited one type companies. You got Strictly Limited, Limited Ones themselves, PlayAsia Exclusives, uh, Game Fairy. There's like two other companies that have several games they haven't released yet, but they've announced. Um, I feel like there's one other one I'm forgetting right now, but... I can't think of it at the moment, but there's a lot of these 
companies making these limited releases. And I've, I've honestly thought about that because i got so many of them now. I think it'd be an interesting way to try out. Because, you know, like, you ever see, like, those people, like, um, they get, like, so many Steam keys, so they, like, do, like, a one-hour playthrough. Is this worth your time to check this out in one hour? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's move the pink gorilla stuff over here. Now, let's see. Speaking of strictly limited games, I can't remember if I had this since the last time. So, um, 99 videos. I think that's supposed to stand for lives or something in some other language. I may have showed this in my last video. I can't remember. This is from Strict Limited. This is copy 35. I had to actually get this from a scalpel, sadly. Because it was like the third or fourth release. And it was like way, way before I even knew they existed. So, sadly, I did get that from a scalpel. So, not too bad of price, but... <laughs> Let's see, these are some GameStop stuff. And this one... This one I think is from the one place that I'm trying to remember. But I can't remember what they were called. It doesn't have them list. What was that company? I know this, this game I got from the one company I can't think of. But this is supposed to be some kind of puzzle platformer. I like puzzle games, so platformers are always kind of a mixed batch for me. So, see, I did show it off before. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, in case I didn't, I threw it in now. Let's see. Let's show off some of these. Oh, actually, before that, this is the newest Strictly Limited release. This is number 1,117. Uh, this is supposed to be a strange platformer where you have three characters with different abilities you switch between. Kind of reminds me of that weird medieval puzzle game. So, I'm not sure if it's very really puzzle-oriented. But, uh, this was Strictly Limited's newest game when it comes to that. Let me show off some of these GameStop things. Been a while since I got anything from GameStop. Let's see, I think these will all... Nope, there's one more. Okay, so... You know that one game series no one remembers and don't pay attention to stick with it ain't the price I paid for it. So, Dead Island uh, Whiptide uh, is a sequel to Dead Island. I think I got this for $2.99. Um, but this is a good version. Uh, I mean, a good copy. It's all clean. The disc's clean. It got the inords. Um, all it just doesn't have is just this big sticker, which probably peels off way better than GameStop stickers. And this is the special edition, which came with, like, extra DLC. I've never played this one. Um, I heard it was worse than the first one, which launched with bugs to begin with, so... Um, but this is digital. If you get the next-gen version, the remaster, this is a digital code. So if you get that used, you're not getting this, so... That's why I got that. It was real cheap. And on top of that, I got Skylands of Swap Force to play with my nephew when he comes visits on my PS4. Because I don't really use my Wii U for too much. So, if you remember, I got my Wii U like way back when Skylanders was actually big. Um, I got a good price on the Skylanders Swap Force Wii U bundle, which personally I would wet. I would have whether got that freaking Wind Waker version used or something at that point. If I if I could go back and tell myself something, but at the time Skylanders stuff was really expensive. It didn't it didn't go. Pfft. No one really saw whether that was going to happen or not. So, um, but that's what happened. So. It pretty much was a bad decision, sadly. Uh, Stick It to the Man. This is supposed to be a platform or puzzle game. This was like two-something. So this was also cheap. It was in a very disgusting case, though. So I put one of my clean ones. And that to be cleaned with some other cases. No, I didn't... Well... <sighs> The Wii U was a good Black Friday price, and it came with the Skylanders um, Swap Force. So, like, for the price of all of it together, it was a pretty good discount. But, you know, after, you know, seeing, you know, when you, let's see, what was it? 
What was the one after Swap Force? Still need to finish some games. Yeah. Um, whatever the one was after Swap Force was when Skyland or stuff started declining and hitting rock bottom. And it was at that point where, like, if you spent, like, full price money on anything, you really got screwed over then. So, I wasn't that screwed over, but, yeah, if I could go back and rectify something, I'd be like, no, just just buy the Wind Waker model used at GameStop or something. Just do that. Just just do that. Uh, let's see. Dante's Oferno. I've never gotten around to buying this. Every copy i ever seen was garbage. This is a clean case, booklet, clean disc. It was four ninety nine. I I was I am elite still, so it was three ninety nine. So I know that was a good price. I think that's all the GameStop stuff. Um, but yeah, they did a um, what was it like buy three get for ten or four for ten or something. Uh, yeah, I do remember a lot of people saying it was a pretty good game. A lot of people basically said it was a EA type, um, um, Devil May Cry type game. So, or God of War style game. That, that kind of vein. So, I hold it was pretty good. I've been mean to get a copy of it, but like I said, every copy I ever saw, complete, utterly destroyed. It's like, uh, Yakuza Zero for 20 years. Wanted to try it the series. Now... Um, no, I, I was thinking of a different game. I was thinking of that zombie game when you said zero for some reason. <laughs> um, it's a God of War game. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope it'd be compared to Devil May Cry, God of War, or somewhere around there. Close enough kind of stuff. Um, the last thing now, this wasn't a part of the sale bundle thing those were in, but this was a brand new copy of this. Now, this is supposed to be like an old PC game we mastered. Um, I'm not really familiar with it, but this was $4.99 new, and I think it still is that price, so I, it might not be a very good port of it. That or it didn't sell well, I'm not sure. So, but, I just was, I was like, well, $4.99, if it's bad, then, well, it wasn't a big loss. Let's see, some imports. I think I got this for 15, Hand of Fate 2. I have the indie box version somewhere over there on my shelf of the Hand of Fate 1. So uh, it was like 15 bucks on um, PlayAsia. It has English, so I was like, sure, why not? I even tried a little bit because I never played it. Kind of an interesting game. Obviously, I should, if I'm going to do a full playthrough of something, I should do the first one now. Let's see, um, this, now this was an interesting thing to come across, because I actually, I recently got a new cable for my Dreamcast, because my original Dreamcast died back when I was in the old yellow house that had the floor that was sinking in. My original Dreamcast died near the end of the years I was in that house. And then I got lucky and I found a Dreamcast at Goodwill. Now, I only had the, the cable box for my Dreamcast. I did not have any of uh, upgraded cables from there. So I actually got a pair of those cables of the just generic uh, yellow, red, uh, yellow, red, white cables. And um, I actually was testing out my uh, Dreamcast with my capture card with those. And it worked out all right. Now, I picked a game... That's actually pretty rare now. I think it's called Cannon Striker. It's like an arcade game that has Capcom characters and SNK characters in it. It's really bizarre. But interestingly enough, the people who made all these games, the, um, and I'm not even going to, Psy Psycho, like, that's the company that made these games. They actually helped make that game. So that was kind of strange. Uh, but these are a bunch of bullet hell shmump type games. I th I'd say it's more appropriate to call it shmump. Uh, not bullet hell appropriately. But, uh, and oddly enough, I own the PS1 version of these. Soul Divined. I have the PS1 version of that. Um, I'm not really familiar with these other little games. But Gunboard, which I believe is... I think it's the artwork on the very top. 
But Gunball is supposed to be a really popular shooting game there. So, but this is four games in one, and there was a volume two that has like most of the sequels to these games. So, uh, as far as I understand, this is a Play Asia exclusive, I think, or it's Asian exclusive at least. But it does have English in it, so it's import friendly in it. At least I think it's uh, in English in it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, it does have some English text on there. Let's see. You can see that it does have some English. So, so I would assume it does have English then. Yeah. And I still need to get the Volume 2 collection. So, I haven't ordered that one yet. I'm planning on ordering the Volume 2 collection and that Capcom Beat-Em-Up collection for the PS4. Because Japan got a physical version of that. I'm really, really disappointed with you, Capcom, for not giving me that. Not giving me that, though. I love, love me some good beat -em up games. And you didn't, you didn't give me a hard copy. How could you, Capcom? But at least Japan got one, so I can get that. I don't know if it has English on it, but I'm willing to sacrifice that for that. <laughs> anyway, um, I did get a new VR game, Operation Warcade, which is... From what I understand, it's supposed to be you simulating playing an arcade game. I don't know if there's any kind of fourth wall breaking in that, but... See, are you going to get the Tetris effect? Um, I'm interested in maybe getting that. I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't actually saw any gameplay of it yet. That's the one thing I've been meaning to check out. If, like the gameplay looks really interesting. I would probably really. But I just haven't checked it out yet. So I don't know if I'm going to get it brand new. I would probably get it down the line for a later price at least. But I'm not sure about brand new yet. I need to look at some of the gameplay. Let's see. Then another VR game I got to try out some recently. Actually Firewall Zero Hour. This is like a slot type. Yeah, I'd, I'd say pretty much like SWAT if you played any of that. And it is versus players. It's four players versus another four players. And um, it's not too bad. I'm having a little trouble. Like, you can use a controller or the aim controller. And personally, I think the aim controller is better. Because I have tried it both ways. But the thing is, it still uses the light on your controller too, so you actually still have to move the controller like your gun. So it's kind of strange. <laughs> but um, it's an interesting game, but I need to find out. I'm, I'm thinking of trying a different location for my camera and we cowboyed it. Because I'm having some problem where like my gun starts like, like curving a little in that. So it could have to do with the angle because I have it at a higher position. And for most games, it worked pretty all right, but it might be causing this one trouble, maybe. Uh, let's see, I think that's all the VR-type stuff. Um, oh, here's one limited one game that snuck by, uh, Slime Son. Uh, I don't really like this cover. It had two covers, the reversible, so when I open it, I can reverse it to the other one. Uh, this is, from what I understand, a platformer game, so... Moving on... Let's see. Let's save a little of that. Let's go to the Pink Gorilla stuff. So, I have the Super Nintendo original game of this. So, when Pink Gorilla, which they're actually going to be doing today, late at night. Um, I'm not sure if I want to live stream that. I'm kind of debated live streaming. Uh, let, let me explain this for So, Pink Gorilla, near the end of... Um, I think it was... Either was just before October started, or a few days before October. But they did this random stream. They stream usually, like, every night after they close the store. And they just, like, you know, they'll clean stuff and talk with people and stuff. And show off weird stuff they find. But, um... They decided, you know those old infomercials where it's like, we have this fabulous thingamabob for sale, and you can call in now and get for like half off and all kinds of crazy shit. He's like, hey, what if we do something like that? 
without store on Twitch. It was like a really strange idea. It was really cool too, actually. So he's live going through his store on Twitch, showing stuff off, and people are just using the messaging system, the PM system, be like, "I want that, I want that, get get that, my order and stuff." And that he said it was really successful. So they're doing that again tonight. And I think I mentioned it yesterday on stream that I'm kind of confused why, because you know Monday's tomorrow. This is Sunday. So, you know, people like me would normally be going to bed. But uh, I have tomorrow off, and that was actually an accident. That wasn't on purpose, actually. Um, I, If you look at my Twitter, you can see I was questioning and seemed kind of disappointed about that. And then I just went there, but, oh, yeah, I took that Monday off. Oh, that works out. So, But um, this was my stuff from his first sale. So, Wonder J, this was... Uh, this is a sequel to a Super Nintendo game, which I do actually own. It's a really cool, like, honestly, check out footage of either of these two games. They have really cool sprite work done in them. Probably won't understand a lick of it. I think the first game has a fan translation. This thing, as far as I know, has no translation. They're very text-heavy, so not easy to play if you don't speak Japanese, but very beautiful sprite work. So this was like ten dollars, I believe. So I was like, sure, why not? I've been mean to get. Then I also finally got a version of Overclock. Yep. Devil Survival Overclock. Now I have the original DS version, but I never got Overclock. Uh, it has extra content, extra ending, and crap in it. But um, I think I got for twenty dollars. And it is complete, it's clean and everything, so it's not any missing stuff. So, I think GameStop normally sells it for $30, and you know, usually you just have the damn cartridge. So it's like, I'm not going to pay $30 for just the fucking cartridge. The only way I'm going to do that is if the cartridge normally online, like for $100, then I'll pay $30 for that. But, you know, I'm, I'm not paying $30 for a damn cartridge. Like, ass wipes. And I got one more interesting item from them, but I want to show these two. These are just these were cheap Battlefront one Star Wars Battlefront one and two for the original Xbox. They don't have any artwork. Uh, he did, one of the specials. He had multiple specials he did during this. Uh, one of them was all the the single discs. You know, no artwork booklet. Uh, they were all half off. So I was like, well, they're super cheap away and half off. I was like, sure, why not? I never got them, so I got them. Now, one item I'm really interested in is this Inuyasha game. So, you may know this. It says Wonder Swan. And if you're not familiar with the Wonder Swan, it was a handheld made by Goomba Yukoi, the cradle of the original Game Boy. It was made with Bandai. Because, you know, after the Virtual Boy, he was basically thrown under the bus, blamed for it. Because Nintendo pushed the damn thing out when he didn't want to, blah, blah, blah. But uh, he made this thing with the uh, Bandai. So, this Inuyasha game, it looks like it's kind of, um, kind of a side scrolling hack and slash with story in that. It is complete. It has the booklet and case. I always find Wonder Swan cartridges interesting. It been a long time since I showed one of these off. Really interesting how they did the cartridges. But, um, it is complete. The box is sadly a little mushed up, so it's not in the perfect condition. I think this was $15. Uh, not super cheap, but considering it was complete, even though it was damaged a little, I was like, eh. Now, I saw it in the corner of my eye, so I didn't get to see what system it was. It wasn't one of the things when they went to the handheld area. I just could see the, you know, I could vaguely see the Inuyasha and that, so I was like, sure, I'll take that. I thought, I assumed it was the Game Boy, because they were looking through Game Boy stuff at the time. But in the email, they told me it was a Wonder Swan game, would that be okay? I'm like, yeah, I have a Wonder Swan, so that works out for me. I like that. Let's see. The Death Mark, the recent victim of the ESRB's censorship. Weighted mature for blood and gold, partial nudity, strong languages, suggestive themes, violence, but apparently having a middle thing shut in your mouth open is too gruesome, so. 
But this is supposed to be a really, really dark game, so look forward to trying that out. Maybe do a live stream of it. Let's see. Before, because I, I really, really look forward to showing off Jimmy stuff here. So, some two, two really bizarre non-gaming stuff here I got. So, I got... Now, this was back when Visa in America... I'm not sure if Visa publishes manga in Germany or EU. But back when manga was first starring in America... Uh, they would reverse, they'd scan in the pages and reverse everything. And normally, you know, if there was a story reason for a character to say left or why, you know, they'd fix that. But this is back when Visa actually reversed everything. So, the all look at this reminds me of Cyborg 009. I've, ooh, excuse me. I have never heard of this game. Uh, this manga. <laughs> I have never heard of this manga. Why there's a game. Uh, but it sounds like it's pretty dark. It sounds like the, the main character got in an accident. Like he was a very shitty doctor. And then he got in an accident. And he had a bad surgery in that. So I don't know much about it. It definitely has a very... I'd say 70s kind of artwork to it. Like Astro Boy. Like old Astro Boy look. To the artwork. Let's see. Let's find the... Uh, Battle picture. It really reminds me of Cyborg. Cyborg 9009 of that. So. I look forward to reading that. Sadly this is volume 2 I believe. I think it said it was volume 2 somewhere on this thing. Can't remember. But I didn't mean to look into that. It sounds interesting. That I want to see if it's made by the same person. Who made Cyborg 009 though. It really looks very close to that. Another thing that's interesting is uh, Visa also would do uh, how Western comics were in individual. So I have never heard of this either. Gospel. One pound gospel. Never heard of it. There's actually two issues of it in this. So issue four and well, this one says... Five round two, so I'm assuming this is issue five. But what I find interesting is the artwork looks like Watham and a half. You know, the the Chinese dude that gets sprayed with water and turns gender to a female, and then all the other characters like yeah, the character had changed into a bit. Uh, character had changed into a pig. Character had changed into a fox, and all kinds of other crap. The artwork looks like her artwork. So, uh, I'm curious if it is horse. Let's see. Let's find... There, I think that's a good picture. Let's see, right there. That, the way sh those character, those two guys are drawn really reminds me of that. So, um... There is the name, if anyone wants to take a look at that for me. But, I, th I think that is that... And she also made Amy Yasha, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah, she made Amy Yasha, and then that other one with the kid with the Oni chick that's, like, obsessed with him or something. Oh, trying to win them old anime and manga, man. I, I think this might be made by them, though, because it honestly looks like her artwork. But, yeah, that was kind of odd to find at the Goodwill. I found these at the Goodwill. Normally, when I see issues like these, they're crushed because they just pal those books in there like hell. So, I was surprised these actually survived wherever the hell they came from. So, that was a very bizarre find, in my opinion. Okay, so before I go on any more of these other things, I think I want to get... Let's get to the show. The, what I think is going to be a nice, cool show here from Jimmy Jimmy. Jimmy of Import... For the win. So we got a nice lovely number of things here. One of the things I'm happy to... One of the things I'm really happy to find here. Was something I've been looking for for a long long time. And that is the PS2 Wizardry game. And I asked him if he would sign it. And he did. He even did his little little fish kill. Little sad fish looking kill. Not sure if he ever really explained that. But it is a complete version has the book, the disc. The disc, it looks like it's been buffed before. But 
I'm very happy to get this. This is usually a very expensive item to find. It is the English version, too. Because you got to keep in mind, Jimmy lives in Japan, so there were, um, I think there were two Japanese games in here? I can't. But they're mostly American. He has a lot of American and Japanese games, so, but most of these are American, so as you can see, it does have an ESRB wing, so it is American version. So I am very happy to get this. It's very nice. I thank, thank you for signing it. I will find a very lovely spot for it on my shelf. But some of the other stuff we got here is one of the only Alchemist games from NIS on the N original Nintendo DS. I think the series started on the PSP or the DS. I can't wait when nimble. Let's see. Oh, you got that too. Lucky you. Lucky you. That's that is very hard to find in the mail anymore. But, um... I don't ever really got into these too much. And these are all complete, by the way. These all have the books. They're all in good condition, clean and everything. They also were very packaged very nicely, which is usually what I always find from Japanese people. They always, always do such lovely packaging. Love that. And what's really, really surprising to me, because Jimmy was in America at the time when he sent these. He was in uh, Las Vegas, I think, at a convention. He got to go to a panel with... um. John Wiggs. So, and he still still did very nice job packaging them. And he must have spent his own money on that packaging materials. See, normally I have lots of packaging materials because, you know, I get a lot of stuff in the mail of that. So, and I'm sure he probably does something similar at home. But, you know, he wasn't at home. And I'm sure he didn't bring a pack pack full of packaging material with him probably. So, um, so I, I appreciate the nice packing because the mail people... Very, very disappointing with the male people. They left his package outside, and it was downright waning. And my mom went and saved it. My mom went out and saw it out there because I told her um, somebody might come to the door because it was a package um, I was getting from somebody. So uh, she saw it out there, and she went and got it. the box on the outside was wet, but the inside, sadly, it didn't soak into the inside. But even if it did, he wrapped them up really good. So um, it could have probably lasted a bit. But if it was out there for a really, really long time, it probably would have eventually damaged them. So I'm very mad about the mailman people right now. So, um, But uh, I'm very glad he packaged that very nicely. Yeah, wizardy. But um, I'm not a big person in this series, so... But I'm very happy about getting the PS2 Wizardry. You know, it's it's very ironic that Wizardry was a Western RPG series that turned into a Japanese series and is not popular in the country it was created in and was originally popular. And it's very bizarre how it moved from America to Japan. Because there are, there's a, I think the last one was a PS3 digital. You, It was localized. But it was only digital in America. Though I think there is a physical Japanese version uh, that you can get if you're interested in that. Uh, let's see. And a Witch's Tale. I'm not sure if this one's particularly too well. It's a sh it's a odd RPG. It is an RPG. I'm not really too sure on that. I've... It was complete, so I kind of just got that. There, and there were other games I won from him, but other people asked for him. How he did is he posted a bunch of stuff on Twitter and asked people if they were interested in them. So, uh, some people asked for some stuff uh, before I did. So, But still, I am just so glad I got this. So. Uh, Coliseum Road to Freedom. Uh, this, I'm not really sure if this is a good game. I actually was kind of mistaken. I thought this was a different game. Uh, there's a Capcom game that precedes Dead Rising, and it was the original... You'd have to know Dead Rising history. To put it as simple as possible, um, they wanted to make a game where there was a lot of crap that come kill at you. That come kill you. And there, there was a Coliseum game on the PS2. That was the first game of that concept, and then the next would be Dead Rising. And I thought this was that game, but I was wrong. Uh, it was really small, and I think it only had, like, that much of it showing or something, so. Uh, but still, it looks like an interesting game, though. 
It looks like you still fight a lot of stuff for that. So, might be a good one. I'm not sure. Now, something... One of the few Resident Evil games I don't have. The Dark Side of Chronicles. One of the Whale Shooter Arcade games. Now, I've been looking for a good price on this. And Jimmy gave me a good price on this. It's complete. I've tried to get it on game GameStop sales before. But it's always destroyed. Destroyed. Get a damn buffer, GameStop. Uh, did you know about those Fantastic Wizardry games on the PS2? Yeah, now that you mention it, I think there were multiple Wizardry games on the PS2. I think there were other ones, weren't there? And also, I think there's one on the PSP also. But I'm pretty sure the last one currently was on the PS3, though, I think. But, yeah, it, it is odd how it went from West to a Japanese franchise. Very odd. <laughs> it's a shame we missed a lot of them, too, so... Personally, I, like, I've always heard great things about this game, so you, you can't understand how excited I am getting this in my hands. It means a lot. Uh, a whole game, Jonah the Grudge Haunted House Simulator. Um, I've heard this is kind of hard to get nowadays. It's a whole game. It's on the Nintendo Wii. It's a PSP stuff I got here. Now, this I hold is a pretty bad RPG, but it's pretty hard to get, I hear, so. I hear it's pretty generic. Yeah, I'm, I don't hear, like, per se, it's, like, unplayable bad. I just hear it's very generic bad, I hear, so. I haven't played it. It's a complete version. Let's see, are you excited as possibly getting a girlfriend? Uh, probably not, because I don't wish for my soul to be sucked out along with my wallet. Um, Warriors of the Lost Empire. Now, this this publishing company is very infamous on the Wii because they made a lot of garbage shelf whale. But um, they also did a lot of bizarre Japanese games localizations, and most of them were considered pretty bad. So this is kind of a gauntlet hack and slash kind of affair. So now this this was a PSP game I've been looking for a while now. I think the only other one I need, the first one. I got the second one, and I got that other one that's not called Legend of Heroes. It was called something else, but it is part of the Legend of Heroes series. But this is the Legend of Heroes 3. And if I never quickly, it wasn't two and one out of order in America. I can't remember. One of them, two of them of the PSP ones will misnumbered out of order or some crap, but... Um, I believe one is the only one I need out of the PSP trilogy. So, I was very happy to get this for a good price. And then this one I think is also pretty hard to come by these days. I don't... I think I got a Vita game that's part of this series. I can't really remember. But I'm always a sucker for PSP games I don't have. PSP had a lot of good RPGs. And then, sadly... He did show a bunch of sample 20, uh, 2000s. Now, if you're not if you're not familiar with the sample 20,000 series in Japan, the sample 20,000 was a budget uh, that was done by the um them them. Oh, what are they called again? Damn it! The the people who did all the defense force because the first. Like, five Earth Defense Force games were sample 2020s. But, um, that, um, I'm not very good at pronouncing it, um, began with an O. We got several of the games, but the first two entries, this is number two. But the first two entries were part of the sample 20,000 series, volume, this is volume 20. Uh, the, each one was, I think volume went from volume 1 to 1,000 or something. I can't remember. There's a lot of them. But these were like, basically the equivalent 1999 in Japan or something like that. There's a lot of bizarre one, But like the first like five entries of Earth Defense Force was a part of this. I have like a bizarre zombie apocalypse games where you play as a ambulance driver during the zombie apocalypse saving people and Fighting zombie monsters in the ambulance. Um, see, the Wizardry game I'm in to called X Wizardry 10th. Maybe, and then later went on to Experience Inc. 
I'm a little rusty on all the Japanese Wizardy games. I used to know a bunch of them. It's been a long time since I really messed around with Wizardy stuff. But um, he gave me this. He had four of them for sale, and I was going to buy all four of them, but he said he changed his mind. So um, I told him, it's up to you, man. But he, he gave me this. That's cool. I've been looking forward uh, for these two games. So this is the second one, so I need the first one. Um, I can't remember how to pronounce me and the inability to pronounce. Why couldn't I just be bad at math like everyone else? I had to be okay with math and have horrible pronunciation problems. I couldn't just be bad at math. Couldn't be. Just couldn't be. But, um, it's like, um, Ukut, Ukutu, Kop, I can't remember. I have the PS, the newest game on the PS4. It was the Banana Edition. See, Classic Heroes 1 was basically... Yes, Classic Heroes 1 was basically anime version of Wizard League. That is true. Actually, Experience Inc. made Classic Heroes, didn't they? Hmm. But, um, yeah. Actually, maybe if I showed the two... The main character on, that, on the back, if I can give normal reflection, maybe recognizing... Because she's in, like, almost all the games except the the one in the really outrageous outfit. So, I'm glad to get one of them, but I still got to find the other one. So, <laughs> but, yeah, I think, now I think about it, I think Earth Defense Force 1, 2, and Tactics were part of the sample series, I think. And then, I think there was one other entry of the sample series. I, oh, yes, that, that mech game, Enix actually published that in America. So it wasn't called Sample. Um, I can't remember what it was called. It was a really bizarre game. You're a, a teenager high school girl with a remote thing and you actually control like a, a giant Voltron Mechazord thing and fight monsters in Tokyo and shit. That's where it was. I have the, the US published game of that. I just don't remember what that hell the title went by maybe maybe that's it like i said i'm rusty on wizardry japanese i mean hell i don't even remember the last time i ever looked up any of that stuff must have been way back in the early ps3 era or something um i feel like there's still another sample game i got but i can't remember but yeah there's a lot of those but yeah, Jimmy had the the first one of this series, and I think he had the one where there's there's this girl at a beach that gets like infected by an alien virus, so she becomes like a giant Godzilla monster, and you have to fight her in a, while she's walking around terrorizing a beach in a in a bikini. The attack of the Friday monsters. Um, I think it was published in the EU as well, but I think it had a completely different title in the EU. And the Earth Defense Force, interestingly enough, was actually, and that, that ambulance hospital game I was just talking about, the Earth Defense Force game and that hospital zombie game were actually localized in the EU under uh, the EDF games. I, I don't know if they were called the EDF games back then in the EU. But I do know they were localized in that hospital game. Um, if that mech game was... Uh, I think it had a completely different title in the EU. Because I don't think that was the title on the English game. I don't think it was. It's been a long time since I pulled that out. But I, I actually... I've actually wanted to do a playthrough of that. Just because it's so fucking funny. Because you have to be careful not to get involved. Because you know. You're just like the size of someone's finger. And there's giants. Just. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta be careful. Not to get caught in some random lasers. Or poof, deep fried. But um, those are my pickups from Jimmy. And I'm. Again I have to state. Thank you so much for the wizardry and signing it. I will definitely, I, I'm not sure where I want to put it on my shelf, but I want to put it somewhere where it's visible because I'm, I'm really happy about getting this. Like the PSP stuff, I'm happy also getting the Wesley Evil Dark Chronicles. You don't know how much of a nightmare it's been, Mr. Mosquito. I don't know if Mr. Mosquito was part of the sample series, was he? 
I don't think Mr. Mosquito is a part of the sample series. I don't think he was. But Mr. Mosquito is a pretty good game too, though. I want to get the sequel that was a Japan exclusive. I want to get that. It's not super expensive. I've been wanting to get that for like a millennium. Like a millennia, man. That, that's a hilarious game. If, you, if you've if you never played Mr. Mosquito for the PS2, you should. You should. You should. So, so we still have a small stack right here of stuff. So some Vita titles that I got on some Amazon sales. So I think these are RPGs, I think. Or the visual novels. No, that's all PG. I'm not sure if that one is. But it has the same beginning part, so I guess it is. And then that was a limited one. So these two games were on sale on Amazon. Uh, if I can get a good... So I don't know really much about them. They were published by Axis. So, uh, they will, I, th I think I paid like 15 bucks for them, so. I don't know much about them, but they were cheap, so. I'm sure a lot of Vita, Vita games are probably going to get scalped like hell over the years, so. Be honest, it's probably a good idea to stock up on anything you're interested in before they get scalped or targeted or something. So, uh, this was a limited one game, so. Let's see. Play some creepy bug hole game from the sample series. Hmm. Not sure. A horror bug game. Another one. See, the closest thing I could think of about that would be that Bug Island on the Wii. But as far as I remember, the sample series was only on the PlayStation 2. Now, some of those games would become a series on other stuff. Like the EDF and the, the Zombie Bikini series. Those became their own series and continued on. Um, I can't think of a bug hole. Oh, wait. No, no. That wasn't part of the sample thing. But um, Michigan was a whole game on the PS2, but that was by Suda51. Didn't involve bugs either when I think about it. It involved something probably worse. <laughs> but um, this is a limited one release now. Um, title's probably kind of hard to see there. But, uh, it is kind of hard to freaking see. Cyber, Cyber Arc Bartender Action. It's kind of hard to weed. Does it have any copyright thing in the back? No. But, as far as I understand, it's kind of like a, kind of a 16 pit. A 16-bit looking bartender game with a lot of dark story background stuff for that. I'm not too familiar with it, but I do know the guy who made, um, what's up, PC? I don't even know if I want to mention it, um, what is it, uh, Wolf Girl and Me or something like that? Um... I remember the creator of this game went to one of his live streams when he was doing some of his 3D modeling on um, that Japanese streaming thing. Because sometimes he tweets those out and shows stuff he's making of that. And the creator of this game actually showed up on his live stream, so he, he liked it. Uh, but um, I'm not really familiar with it to my myself. Apparently it's actually getting a sequel, though, so... Uh, you went around with a goal in the dark forest and you were attacked by giant insects. Okay, so it's definitely not Bug Island. <laughs> hmm. It doesn't ring a bell. There's a lot of sample games. A lot of them. Quite a lot. It's like it's like the equivalent of, you know, um, what was it? Uh, cartoon Cartoon? Like, will Powerpuff Girls, Grim Adventures, Courage the Cowardly Dog, you know, will a lot of those... Cartoons had to like very force like pilot episode to just even see if it'd be a concept to, to become an actual series or something like the sample series was like a video game equivalent of that it's like just throw ideas at the wall and hey you know that one's stuck we could we could make something into that but okay so I got a good 
Good price on this. I've been wanting to play this just because the Final Fantasy Tactics main character was in it. But the, the Decinia PS4 game. Now I heard this isn't actually too good. I heard. But uh, I haven't played it yet. Still sealed. But um, yeah, I think I got it for $20. $15. I can't nimble. Uh, I got it cheap of that. So. I was like, sure. I've been waiting to check it out. And then something I live streamed last night. This uh, weird hero school, this hero school story game, um, this launched at a nineteen ninety nine price point. Um, it's kind of eh. It got a little better after I got access to other job classes, but it's kind of just a time waster game. It's no deep story or anything, at least so far, and it certainly don't look like it's going to. Um. I don't know if it's on the Vita. I feel like it has a Vita version, but I could be wrong. Honestly, I think this would be something great for mobile. Unless you just have a day, you just want to play something dead-brained. Um, each of those games cost 2,000 uh, two, 2, yen, around $20. That's why, yeah. Like I said, the equivalent of the the 1999 uh, cheapo game. The, um, the, um, the, um... Dang it, I said earlier, where's, where's the word I'm thinking of? The, uh, the, um, the, the bargain bin price game. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I was trying to remember why it was called 2000. I couldn't really remember. But yeah. It was basically the equivalent of the American 1999. Budget game, that's what I was thinking of. Budget game. At least, at least with their budget games, though, in the sample series, many of them were very unique, strange ideas. Like, who would have thought of having a zombie apocalypse game where you're driving around in the ambulance? Like, there's no getting out of the ambulance or anything. You, you are only driving that ambulance. You either go inside the hospital and do some things there, or you go out in the ambulance and you kill zombies and save people. Very, like... There was some very strange stuff in there. So, but that should be everything now. So, again, Jimmy, thank you. Thank you so much for Wizardry. This made my month, made my year, honestly. Very good. I've looked for that forever, and the two only times I've ever seen it, people went my arm, my foot, and maybe my eye. So, Gave me a very nice price on all of that. I'm very glad. Some of these are stuff I've been looking for. Other stuff I'm not too familiar with and just got the hell of it. I've been looking for a good copy of that forever too. So like I said, some of these I've been looking for. Some of these like... Like I said, I'm not too familiar with this one. I hope it's just, like I said, kind of generic bad. Not bad bad, but I'm not too familiar with it. But either way, I'm always willing to give something to try. Because sometimes I like stuff that people don't like. That's the thing you always have to be careful when you listen to reviewers. Because just because they say bad doesn't necessarily mean you will hate it. You're supposed to use the information they give you to help you assess whether, like, hell, I've had people make bad reviews of stuff, like, as in, you know, reviews they don't like this game, and I bought the game because of it. Because they're like, oh, you know, that's actually pretty cool, actually. I like that. I'm going to get that, actually. <laughs> But that's everything today, so unless somebody has something, something to ask about, we may have to click this out. But uh, if anyone has anything to ask, go ahead right now and quick little wound up what's uh, going on. So right now, work has been pretty average. I'm using up my vacation that I have left before the war, the before the year rolls over, because our, our vacation doesn't roll over. Though they are staying, uh, starting a program next year where we can roll over some vacation to the next year, but we can't apply that to the vacation of this year. So I've been getting that vacation put around. You mean you can't believe reviews? So when Call of Duty games aren't always awesome? Well, I, I'm just saying... When you watch a review, whether it be good or bad, you should be 
absorbing the information and applying it to yourself, not always taking the word of that person always so close to heart, you know, whether they really, really liked it or really, really hated it. The reviewer should really present information to you to help you get an idea of whether you think you're going to like it or not, not tell you whether you should think you should like it or not. They should help you understand whether you're going to like it or not, not tell you whether you should like it or not. So that's why I try to not be incredibly overly negative even to things that I didn't really enjoy. I try to look at the more positive things. Sometimes that can be really hard, though. <laughs> Anywho, um, no. Though, um, you know, to be honest, though, if you look through some Japanese games, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if someone's done something like that, though. That wouldn't shock me, to be honest. But we got, uh, when it comes to the live streaming that, we got a lot of stuff done lately. We got Persona 5 done, got Record of the August War Zero, which is something I hadn't played for years. Okay, then not for me. We got Resident Evil 7, all its DLC done, besides the Jack 55th birthday and Ethan Must Die, which I'm not really worried about that, Metal Gear Survival. We got quite a few things done that, so I'm kind of actually happy we're getting the book closed on a lot of stuff. So, I'm hoping to get back to Alundra. We did some of Way Gagayant, which was Dennis's request game. And, oh yeah, and we, we finished Ark the Lad, so I'm thinking of doing Ark the Lad next year as well with, uh, I'm thinking of doing Ark the Lad 2 and either between Persona 1 or Dragon Quest 11 as two RPGs starting in the new year. But I'm not sure between those two. I really, I really would like to go towards the old Persona games because I never really did the full playthrough of any of the old ones. So I'd like to work on some of that. But that's still kind of all up in the air. So um, I am behind on a lot of reviews. I've just been busy getting a lot more live streaming done and real world stuff done, so I haven't really sat down and put any review stuff. But I do got a lot of stuff to do reviews on, so hopefully I'll get some of that in order of that. I'm going to try and get some time to get that in. And um, I am going to do the Super Boss in Persona 5. I'm going to try and do some after work streams working on that, which I have failed terribly at doing, but that's why I plan on doing with that. And, um, besides that, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. So, anyway, hopefully, uh, some people thought, saw some good stuff. Honestly, what, what, what do you think was the best thing here? To me, I think Wizardry, like, even though I finally got that damn epic from PlayAsia, like, Wizardry, I think this beats everything I got here today. Keep in mind, I got a... No top screen minorly scratched. I got a 2DS for twenty-seven dollars. So I st still think best best thing I got out today is all this stuff. But what do you think? What do you think? I think the Wizardry game trumps all this stuff. Just but the Epic's also nice. I was really glad to get that though. So. You know, considering it's really cold outside today, my PC and the PS4 really kept this room really hot. <laughs> that was just the hats just not helping. Anyway, I think that's it to that. So, anyway, thank you for joining for today's stream away, Gagayant, and showing off the pickups and that. I, like I said, later on, later on I'm thinking of maybe live streaming the pink gorilla thing, the sale thing they're gonna do tonight, or I might host it and um, have my channel's chat thing up. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't know. I know Dan actually said, uh, "Why didn't I tell him about the other one?" So I told you about this one. So if you don't work tomorrow, they'll be there or be square. Or maybe Dan will be unlucky. He's one of those poor people that's to work tomorrow. <laughs> I got lucky on that. I I had not really realized I took that Monday off until like um, Wednesday of last week, and I was like, 
Oh yeah, I took that Monday off. Isn't isn't that the day before that goil, pink oil thing? So, um, I'm not quite sure. I might do something now. And I'm hundred percent sure. I don't think it'd be the most thrilling thing. It'll be late night in America, which will De Dennis and Carter now be sleep. So I don't know what Dan stats will be on that. So, um, I don't know if I'll really stream it. Might host it though, so yeah, think about it, see why I do that. But either way, um, I'm sure at this time it's getting late for yeah, it's a little past three o'clock here. That's usually around when Dennis runs off. Uh, Dan has a crazy day of work tomorrow, nothing tonight. So it looks like Pink Gorilla got its first victim tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need to screen cap that. And send that to him on Twitter. It'll be like your first victim. <laughs> I really lucked out. Because honestly I wasn't going to waste. One of my vacation days to take it. I wanted to attend it. But I I had other stuff. So it actually was just a huge coincidence. For me. I did not even think about it when I did that. So okay anyway. So thank you for joining. And until I, before I keep blabbing on forever. And somebody points out that Super Mario cereal box. And the troll pirates wearing Foxy's mask. And the Chocobo and Kanji are over here. Sitting next to each other. And that Gilgamesh is in a box right here. And some other random thing behind me. I'll see you next time. Next weekend. Same proving ground time. Same proving grind thine. That didn't rhyme very well at all. Until next time. And be useful for something school game.